Angela here from Nimble Nook, and I had a great question come in today that I had to answer with a little bit for everybody because it got me, it got me a thinking. The question that someone wrote in on my blog was about community-based instructions trips for students with significant disabilities. She wanted to know what I thought were great places to go. She said that she had a pretty good list started already, and it included places like bowling and pet stores and tours at the post office. And she was just wondering if I could come up with any more as she was starting to plan um, the rest of her calendar for community-based instru instruction trips. And I cringed like, <coughs> cringed like that. Um, because of the list that she had so far, it was a list that made me a little sad face, a little sad face. So if you are in the same boat where you're trying to come up with great places to take your students on community-based instruction trips, let me provide a couple of pointers. Take them or leave them. It will all depend on the needs of your students and how your community is set up, what's accessible to you. But I want you to think for just a few moments as you're drafting your community-based instruction calendar about these three important things. Three, three important things. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. All right, number one. Is it fun or is it functional? God, that was like a depressing number one, wasn't it? Is it fun or is it functional? When we as adults come up with a list for community-based instruction, a lot of times we try to think of what's fun. We try to think of what the students will think is fun, what we think is fun. We're, we're thinking about the fun, but that's not functional. I want you as an adult to think about your average week, Sunday to Sunday, your average week. Where are the places that you go? I'm pausing for effect. Where are the places you go? If you're like me, I, I, I have a family, I've got a ton of stuff that I'm running my kids to, and that's probably not realistic for our students. But the thing I do every week without fail, more than once usually, is go to the grocery store. I always go to the grocery store, all the time. Like more than I would like to be at the grocery store, I'm at the grocery store. What about you? And my guess is when you're going to the grocery store, you're not bouncing around all over. Unless you're a couponer and you're looking for the deals, you're usually going to your favorite grocery store. Maybe your two favorite grocery stores. If you are in a place where you've got one that you love for produce and another that you love for the deals. But most people, we are creatures of habit. We go to one grocery store. It's our community grocery store that we like. It's close to either the office, school, home. That's the one we want to go to. But when we draft our community-based instruction calendars, we think, let's go to this grocery store. Let's go to Walmart grocery store. Let's go to Target and try their grocery store. Let's go here. Let's go there. And for our students, it's having to learn a whole new skill over and over and over again every time we try someplace new. And while that seems like fun, it is not functional. And when we start to add in places like the post office for a tour or a pet store, You've got to think, are you wasting your instructional time in the community doing things that are fun? Or are you picking things that are most functional that an average an adult, an average adult does most frequently? And let me tell you, most of the time we're going to the grocery store because we got to pick up some food and we might go out to eat. And when we do, we're usually doing it at a fast food restaurant, not at a sit down restaurant, not at a buffet. Every time we go out to eat, please stop taking our students to buffets. It's at a restaurant where we have to learn, a fast food restaurant where we have to learn how to stand in line, where to stand in line, how to order with the cashier, how to navigate the menu, how to make sure we get our change, how to listen for them to call our number. There's a whole skill set that goes in eating in fast food that we can apply to multiple fast food locations. So going to the grocery store, going out for fast food, those are probably the places we go to most frequently. That should be the bulk of your community-based instruction time. Now I know, I can hear some of you already, like, ugh, that gets so boring, we're going to the same place over and over again. Yeah, like, that's life, right? I don't care how many times I take my kids to McDonald's, they'll still go. I don't care how many times I go to the grocery store, I still gotta go again. So that's part of the nature of our human existence, is we do these things repetitiously as part of our day-to-day -day living. Our students need to be rock solid in those skills, and we should be doing them repeatedly. All right, so that brings us to tip number two, because I know you're thinking it right now. I know you're thinking it. You're like, we're going to the same grocery store 500 times. What are we going to do? I got it. I know. 
I want you to think of what you're doing now. Are you moving in the grocery store like a herd? And I say that with love, but I've been to different campuses on their community-based instruction trips, and it's an adult with like four or five students with special needs, kind of all looking at the produce at the same time or working from the same list. One has a basket, one has the list, one has a pencil, one has a calculator. When I go to the grocery store, I don't shop in a herd. In fact, if I can ditch my kids, it makes me so much happier, so much more successful at the grocery store if I can just go by myself. I can get in and out and that's what I'm looking to do. And when you think of it, the point of these community-based instruction trips for our students who are doing this repetitive trip to the grocery store is legit that you can drop them at the front of the store with a list and a 20, and they can go and fulfill the list, check out, and meet you back at the door. And the reason that's the goal is because for some of our students who are going to end up staying in assisted living, adult living, group homes, they are gonna have their service prov providers take them to Walmart, drop them at the front door, and let them go spend their disability check, their social security on the things that they need. They have to be able to not only determine what the needs are, be able to price compare, but be able to navigate the store, get through the line, check out and come back. That's what adult services really, like that's what adult life for some of our students with disabilities really looks like. So I'm guessing you cringed a little bit, right? Like the thought of taking some of your kiddos to the, to the local Walmart and dropping them off in the front or the local grocery store and dropping off at the front, it's like, oh, like your blood pressure went up a little bit. You started to sweat, like, yes, that's it. Um, but it's, it's amazing how much growing our students have to do in the time that they're with us because those are the skills that they carry forward into their adult life. So it sounds scary, but it's definitely the skill we want to work on. That is so much more important than going to fun places. And that's becoming independent and proficient in the places that we go to. Same thing in a fast food restaurant. Can I say, you know what, we're here for snack. We're just here for a quick snack. Why don't y'all go in, you got $3, I'll meet you back at the door. Can they navigate all of that, fill their drink, go through the cashier process, listen for their number, and meet you back at the door independently without support? Now, some of our students, that's not realistic. They will never be in a situation where they are in the community independently with no supervision. But for a lot of our students, that's the, gonna be the expectation when they hit their 20s, 30s, 40s, and beyond. That's what these community-based instruction trips are preparing them for. Now, for students who will honestly never be in a situation where they'll be alone in the community, think about the purpose for them instead. The purpose for them is to experience the things around them. And inside of a grocery store, you can have a lot of sensory experiences. You can have a lot of experiences with an adult as support that are still functional and still fun and kind of fresh. So just remember that, right? We talked about more functional than fun. We talked about really that independence, being able to drop at the door is your goal. So it's not about figuring out a hundred different places you can go to. It's about getting really good at the handful of places you always go to. And then the third thing I want you to remember is to plan with purpose. So like legit, I think sometimes we think about it in terms of, hey, Last time we went out, we went to McDonald's, and I don't want to go to McDonald's again. Can we go anywhere but there? Like, let's spring for the Wendy's. But for our students who will be on very tight and limited budgets and incomes when they get into their adult life, they've got to be able to be frugal. So if every time you go out, you're like, yeah, we're going to a sit-down restaurant, the average meal costs $12, even sometimes splurging at a Chick-fil-A can be a little pricey, what can we do so that while we're out, we are showing students what realistic budgets are going to be for them in the future? How are we planning that with purpose? Because that purpose is what really matters. All right, so that was my preach moment. I am going to send this to you. Um, the, the friend who was on the site who asked me this question, I'm going to send you this video so that you can see it. But I wanted to make sure I shared this with more than, more than just you. I know there's a lot of people out there who struggle with what community-based instruction should look like for students with significant disabilities. And so just to recap, I want you to remember, it's not so much about fun, it's more about the function. Remember, independence is the goal. We want to get our students as independent in the process as possible by really targeting a specific location and repeat, 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 repeat. And then the last thing is remember the purpose. Is the purpose that you're going to the places that you like? 
or is the purpose that the students are going to places that are going to be most realistic in their adult life? Is the purpose that our students are spending a ton of money or that they're getting to practice, even if they only order one item off the dollar menu at McDonald's, that they're practicing a skill set that they need to develop? Remember the purpose while they're out there is to harness these skills. If you can do that, your community-based instruction trips will be so much more purposeful, successful, functional, a little bit of fun. <laughs> All right, y'all. I just wanted to share that with you. Hopefully you'll go ahead and subscribe right now. Where's the subscribe button? This corner, this corner, up here, wherever it is, click the button now because you don't want to miss more of these helpful tips as we keep on rolling out videos and answering questions to people who write in at www.noodlenook.net. So if you haven't been to the site yet, pop on over, ask some questions, because I would love to answer them here. All right, y'all. Take care. Stay strong. Teach on. Bye.